Hey, and welcome back to another video. This is the second episode of the story where there are so many things that we as humans are unaware of, or lack an understanding. The bijou are one of those things. Follow the journey of Naruto Uzumaki as he befriends the yokai that was sealed inside of him and, she, helps him grow stronger. Please support by liking and subscribing. Let's start the show. It was early in the morning, the sun was rising, painting the sky in beautiful reds, yellows and oranges, and the people of Kanoha were currently gaping as members of the Uchiha police force were busy running around Kanoha, trying to pick up their undergarments, all of which had been hung around the many buildings of Kanoha and dyed bright pink. The sight of the Uchiha police force, one of the most powerful clans in Kanoha, picking up bright pink underwear that had been hung from the buildings, their faces burning with shame and anger, was a sight that shocked all those who were watching. Many of the people, including the Red Eyes themselves, wondered who had the audacity to do this to one of the most powerful clans and the people in charge of the police force. Unbeknownst to all of them one six-year-old Naruto Azuamki was watching the scene unfold from a nearby building, hidden under a camouflage sheet and snickering. What do you think of my latest exploit Akanakan? I must admit I'm impressed, Akane said, laughing within his mind. I've always hated that clan, they're so arrogant. That, and she hated the way they treated Naruto, with his permission she had watched more of his memories. The Uchiha clan had been one of his biggest detractors, and a lot of the abuse he had taken from the ninja forces had been Uchiha. That had been more than enough to put them onto her shit list. Of course, there were more reasons she hated them, but she wasn't going to say anything about that to Naruto until she felt he was ready for that kind of information. Naruto smiled as he moved into a crouching position and jumped off the roof and into an alley. He threw off his camouflage and hid it in one of the many hidey holes he had created within the village. Walking out of the alley he bumped into one of the many Uchiha running around, collecting underwear. You, the Uchiha shouted, gathering the attention of everyone else there as he pointed at Naruto. I bet this is your doing you little deep brat. I'm gonna make you suffer. And so the chase begins, Naruto thought as he laughed out loud and shouted, then you're going to have to catch me, with that he reached into his pocket and pulled out a small self-made smoke bomb that he threw on the ground, covering the entire area in smoke. Asterisk cough cough asterisk where did he go? I don't know. I can't find him in this stupid smoke. Damn him. When I get my hands on that brat. The smoke soon cleared and the group of Uchiha looked around, spotting Naruto as he turned a corner. They soon ran after him and Naruto laughed as he began giving them a merry chase around the village. Having memorized every single side street, back alley and sewer tunnel, Naruto knew more ways around Kanoha than anyone else and had no compunctions against using them to lead the Uchiha clan by the nose. Looking behind him he saw the red eyes chasing after him, their Sharingan active as they tried to use it to track him down. He grinned. Turning his attention back to what was in front of him and quickly turned another corner. Several trash cans were standing off to the side, and Naruto pulled out a small red stick with a WIC on it. He felt Akane channeling her Yuki through his finger and grinned as the WIC sparked and lit. He tossed the stick into one of the trash cans and turned another corner. Just then the Uchiha had turned the corner he had previously turned a few seconds ago and the trash cans exploded, sending food, gunk and other kinds of garbage flying all over the red-eyed clan members, who had all been blown off their feet. Naruto cackled as he continued to run, he turned another corner and found more Uchiha that had stopped collecting their underwear at the sound of the explosion. They quickly spotted him and their faces turned to anger. Look there. It's him. The demon. Get him. Running some more the blonde-haired troublemaker took several twists and turns as he pumped chakra through his legs to increase his speed. He pulled out more smoke bombs, along with some tear gas he had made from onions, garlic, and piss from the Inazuka's dogs. He let them drop behind him and grinned when they exploded into the chasing ninja, causing them all to stop and cough as their lungs, eyes, and nose burned with the terrible mixture of liquids. Naruto rounded another corner and into an alley before jumping on the roof. 
Going through several hand seals he disappeared in a puff of smoke, using the henge, or transformation technique, to transform into a young Chunin with brown hair and steel-gray eyes. After which he began moving away from the parts of Kanoha that had the Uchiha's dyed underwear. You know, pranking the red eyes is starting to get kind of boring. Do you think I should start finding other targets? asked Naruto. Hmm, Akane tapped her chin in thought, it may prove useful to prank others, maybe you should begin pranking a clan like the Inazukas or the Hugas, so that you can practice hiding from people who are good trackers. It was unknown to everyone but Naruto and his inner demoness, but the blonde didn't just use his pranks as a means of revenge. They actually had a three-part purpose, the first being to get back at those who had and still do, wrong him, the second was to train in his stealth, evasion and espionage skills, and the third was to give himself the persona as a prankster and attention seeker, thus ensuring no one took him seriously and thought of him as a threat. So far, it had worked perfectly. Of course, just because you're going to select other targets, doesn't mean you should stop pranking the arrogant bastards. We both know I would never stop pranking the arrogant pricks, Naruto grinned as he stopped building hopping. He looked around, seeing no one in sight and figuring he was far enough from the most heavily populated centers of the village he dropped the henge, reverting back into his blonde-haired, blue-eyed form. He dropped down. From the roof and began to casually walk through the section of the village he was in, they need someone like me to ensure that their heads don't get so big they no longer fit through a door. As he continued walking along, a shadow came up behind him and an emotionless voice spoke up, Hello, Naruto-kun. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf, I demand that Brat be punished for his transgressions. Saratobi held back a sigh as he stared at the man in front of him. Fugaku Uchiha was the head of the Uchiha clan and leader of the police force. He had short, black hair and onyx eyes, with visible creases below them that were made more pronounced whenever he adopted a stern look like right now. He wore a simple kimono with grey pants which had the clan symbol on the back. The man was currently trying to demand that Naruto be punished for the prank that had just been played on his clan. Somehow, someone had snuck into the Uchiha compound, and in the span of one night had taken and dyed all of their underwear pink, then strung them up on the buildings around Kanoha. It was just one of the many pranks that had been played on Fugaku's clan, along with several prominent business owners. Do you have any proof that Naruto is the one who played this prank? asked Sarutobi. Fugaku scowled, of course I do. He was there at the scene of the crime and ran away when my men tried to apprehend him. A lot of people were there at the scene of the crime, Sarutobi pointed out, hiding his frayed patience behind a mask of calm. Fugaku had always hated Naruto for holding the Kyubi, the Uchiha clan had been one of the clans that had suffered the most during the incident, losing nearly one-third of their clan to the great demon. Because of that, even though Fugaku knew that Naruto was not the Kyubi, he still blamed the boy for the fox's transgressions. Also, need I remind that your people had not even bothered to question him, simply blamed him for the prank, Sarutobi had seen the little incident that had caused the chase through Kanoha and knew who was really at fault. And we all know how the Uchiha clan has treated him in the past so it's no wonder he ran when your men attempted to apprehend him and then chased after him. Besides, the old Hokage added when he saw the man's scowl increase, are you telling me that Naruto was good enough to somehow slip past all of the clan members you have guarding your compound? If possible the Uchiha clan leader's scowl increased as he found himself caught in the wily old man's trap. If he admitted that his clan was not good enough to capture one child, a child who was also wearing hideously bright orange clothes that were impossible to miss, from sneaking in, his clan would end up being the laughing stock at the next meeting, even more so than they would be already for having this prank happen to them in the first place. No child could ever get past our guards, Fugaku ground out, knowing he had lost this battle. Then there is no way Naruto could have done it, Sarutobi replied, but rest assured I will do all in my power to find out who did this. Sending one more scowl at Sarutobi, Fugaku spun around and walked out of the door, slamming it on his way out. The Sandame sighed as he let himself lean back in his chair, one hand absently opening a drawer and pulling out his pipe and some tobacco. 
He placed the tobacco in the pipe and lit it with a small katan, fire release, jutsu, absently puffing on it as he thought of this new problem. The mass pranks had only started about eight months ago, around the same time Naruto had started the academy. Ever since then merchants, specific civilians and clans had been hit with a string of pranks, though this recent one was the largest prank by far. He didn't really know who it was, and even though he, like many others, suspected Naruto since he was at every single incident, there was no actual proof that he had done it. Besides, how does a six-year-old child sneak into the Umbu HQ and paint their changing room neon green? Just then the door opened and in walked the troublemaker himself. Like always he was wearing an orange tracksuit with blue on the upper shoulders area as well as up and down the front, a white swirl with a tassel on the left side, a red swirl on the back, a big white collar, orange pants, and blue sandals. Why the boy had decided to pick up such a hideous outfit was beyond the aging Hokage, it was the largest eyesore he had ever seen, almost as bad as Mado Guy's green spandex. Behind Naruto came his most trusted Umbu agent, Itachi Uchiha, who had an amused look in his eyes clearly visible even behind his mask. Ah, Naruto-kun, I just had a conversation about you, Sarutobi said. Was it about how you're finally ready to give me that hat, Ajizen, asked Naruto in a very loud, very obnoxious voice. No, I'm afraid not, Sarutobi puffed on his pipe. You see, there was a recent prank with the Uchiha clan recently. Ano S.A., isn't that your family Itakinii? asked Naruto, looking up at the weasel masked Umbu agent. Yes, it is Narutokun, said Itachi, a smile hidden by his mask. So what happened to them? asked Naruto. It seems someone snuck into the Uchiha clan compound, stole all their underwear, dyed it bright pink and then strung it throughout Kanoha. Sarutobi was suddenly interrupted by a shout of, awesome, from Naruto. You wouldn't happen to know anything about this would you Narutokun, he finished. Eh. I saw all the pink underwear if that's what you're talking about, Naruto scratched the back of his head as his eyes took on a squint that made him look like a fox. But you have no clue who did it, pressed Sarutobi. Of course I do. Shouted Naruto, raising a fist into the air and shaking it, right before a dumb look crossed his face. Um. Where is the Uchi, Yukin? Red-eyed compound again. Sarutobi pinched the bridge of his nose at the sheepish and stupid look at the blonde's face, never mind. You're supposed to be at the academy anyways, Itachi, see to it that he gets there. Of course, Hokage-sama, Itachi bowed before placing a hand on the young blonde's shoulder. Come along Narutokun, time to go to the academy. Ah, but the academy is so boring, whined Naruto as they made their way out, leaving Sarutobi to contemplate just who was pranking his village. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf I was most impressed with your prank this time, Itachi said as he and Naruto were walking towards the academy. He knew that the young blonde really was behind the pranks, but it was so funny watching the others run around trying to find out who did it that he had not said anything. It was very creative. Naruto grinned, thanks. I thought it was pretty masterful myself. I am also pleased that you did not touch mine or my cousin's underwear, the normally stoic Umbu added with an amused look. Grinning sheepishly, Naruto scratched the back of his head, yeah, well, the raven-haired Umbu captain shook his head before stopping in front of the door that led to Naruto's classroom. Excuse me, Itachi said as he opened the door and had Naruto walk in, I found him wandering around town and felt that it would be prudent of me to escort him to his class. The person in charge of the class, a man with graying hair and green eyes, said, thank you, even as he gave Naruto a glare of malicious hatred. Itachi noticed the glare but did not do anything that would get him in trouble, instead making a mental note to report this guy to the Hokage as someone to watch out for. He gave a nod and left via Sunshin. Sit down. Boy, the man said, scowl still in place. You got it, Shinsensei. Naruto shouted, he knew what the man had really wanted to say. Like many others Shinsei hated his guts because of Akane, 
No doubt the man wanted to call him a demon like the others but was prevented from doing so thanks to being in the academy with people who did not know of her being sealed into him. Naruto knew very well that there was a law that supposedly prevented people from telling their children or anyone else who didn't know about the sealing, though it didn't prevent them from telling the children to stay away from him. He walked over to an empty seat, and plopping down and stretching out. The lesson soon began and Naruto found himself bored as hell, all the man was talking about was how the Shodame Hokage founded the village, and Naruto had already read all about that. Man, I'm so bored, Naruto complained to Akane as Shinsi continued droning on. Well, we could always come up with a prank to lighten up the moment, Akane suggested. Maybe. Naruto looked around at all of the students, they were all two years older than him. Very few academy students ever entered at the age of six anymore, since they were no longer in a time of war and the previous loss of shinobi from the Kyubi attack had been filled for the most part. The civilian council had made a new law that essentially cut the shinobi academy down by two years. Now most academy students didn't start until they turned eight. Uzumaki. Shinsi yelled, smirking at seeing him not paying attention, since you don't seem to like paying attention you can leave. What? But I am paying attention. Naruto shouted as he stood up and jutted his chin out with a stubborn look. Oh, then when did the first Okage found the village? Ah. Uh. The day he founded the village of course. Naruto shouted, scratching the back of his head. Shinsi smirked as the class laughed at Naruto who was scowling. Obviously you're not paying attention, and until you do I will not have you in my class, he may not be able to be so blatantly unfair that he would draw the attention of the Hokage, but he was more than capable of doing something like this. Naruto scowled before walking out the door and slamming it shut. As soon as he passed the threshold for the academy he grinned, thank God, I really didn't want to be in there anymore. To the training ground, asked Akane, grinning at her blonde container, even though he didn't know it. Naruto gave a smile that if the two could have seen each other, would have realized were the exact same, of course. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf Ugh, I can't believe that jerk kicked me out again, Naruto thought to himself as he walked through the streets of Kanoha. Are you complaining? asked Akane, her voice belying her amusement. Of course not, Naruto said, scoffing a little. Honestly, how could I complain about getting out of that boring classroom, where all we learn about is that the Shodame could make wood out of the nothing, the Nidame could pull water out of the air, the Sandame could pull every jutsu in Kanoha out of his ass, and the Yandame could flash from one point to the next in less than a second. It's the most boring class I've ever been in. It's also the only class you've ever been in, she quipped. Whatever, I, Naruto stopped talking and took a deep sniff of the air. There was a heavenly aroma coming from somewhere, what is that smell? It smells incredible. Ooh boy, thought Akane as Naruto began to follow the scent, she knew what it was. Somehow, she wasn't surprised that it had caught his attention, she had honestly expected him to find it ages ago. Naruto soon found himself standing in front of a small stand. It didn't look like much, just a very small building with flaps on it that said Ichirakus, behind that the blonde could see a small bar with several stools and behind that, what looked like assorted cooking gear. Even though it didn't look like much, this was where the smell was coming from and Naruto couldn't help but enter, his mouth watering slightly at the scent. As he stood at the entrance an old man walked in through a door in the back of the bar, stopping when he noticed Naruto standing there with a glazed expression. Well hello there, the old man said in a friendly voice, snapping the blonde out of his daze and making him blush as he realized that he hadn't even noticed the man come in. The old man saw it and chuckled, Welcome to Ichirakus. What can I get for you? Naruto opened his mouth to speak, only to close it several times. He looked at the man cautiously and was surprised to find that he had no malicious aura or ill intent towards him. Um, the blonde scratched the back of his head as he relaxed slightly, though he was still prepared to run if necessary. I'm not sure, I just sort of followed my nose. And here you are, the old man finished with a chuckle, well, hop on the stool and I'll give you a menu. Doing as Naruto hopped on the closest stool, 
where he began swinging his legs slightly since they were about two feet off the ground. The old man came over and passed him a menu, pausing when he noticed the whisker marks. Naruto saw him looking at them and tensed, an act which did not go unnoticed by the old ramen chef owner as he set the menu next to him and gave a smile. Just let me know what you want, and I'll have it cooked up in a jiff. Naruto gaped at him for a moment before blushing, speaking in a low voice he said, I, I would like to try something but I don't have any money. He moved to get up but received a shock when the old man placed a hand on his shoulder and pushed him back down. Then the first time will be on the house, he said, a cheerful smile on his face. It would be a shame if I were to lose a customer just because he didn't have any money on him. Now, what will you have? Um. I don't know, Naruto looked at the menu, maybe. Some miso. Miso ha. Huh? Come in, right up, the old man turned his head and cupped his mouth as he shouted, Oi, I am. Get in here, we have a customer. Okay, a voice came from the back before a young girl, who looked to be around 10 or 11 years old, with brown hair that was in a bun and brown eyes, came in. She walked over to the two of them and looked at Naruto, blinking in idle curiosity, causing Naruto to tilt his head in confusion. Kawaii. The squeal startled Naruto so much that he almost fell out of his seat, and likely would have were it not for the fact that Ayam had somehow magically appeared next to him and was currently squeezing the life out of him. Oh too san he's so cute, she gushed as Naruto tried to decide whether he should feel embarrassed by her words or petrified that this girl who he had met not more than a few seconds ago was choking him with her hug. He was thankful when she let go, at least for a few seconds because she soon began to rub his whiskers. I've never seen such cute birthmarks, she said, running a finger over them, they were slightly bumpy, rather than being smooth, almost like a scar. Against his will Naruto began to make a purring sound in the back of his throat. Of course, this was the wrong thing to do when around a young girl. Kawaii. Naruto suddenly found himself back to being squeezed to death, and was now fearing for his life. He wondered how long he would survive without oxygen. I am, you may want to let him go, the old man said, it looks like you're choking him. I am looked down to see Naruto, blue in the face, with swirls in his eyes. Oh. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to, I mean I was just trying, the old man laughed as Naruto began to get his bearings back, how about you just help me make some miso? Miso? Coming right up. I am said enthusiastically as she somehow appeared back behind the bar. Watching her do that, Naruto was almost reminded of the Yandame's ability to flash from one point to another. A few minutes later the food that the delicious smell was coming from was placed in front of him by Ayam. Eat up, she said cheerfully. Naruto sniffed at the ramen, taking in its heavenly aroma before breaking apart a pair of chopsticks. Wrapping the noodles around them he took a bite, rolling the food around in his mouth before he froze. The ramen chef and his daughter tensed, wondering if he didn't like the ramen. This. This is delicious. Naruto shouted, right before he began to gorge himself on the bowl of ramen. The old man looked from the currently stuffing his face Naruto to his daughter, Ayamekan, I think we just found our number one customer. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf, OK Narutakun, I think you're ready to learn actual hand-to-hand -hand combat, Akane told her container as he finished exercising. The blonde academy student had gained a lot physical prowess, for a six-year-old that is. With the extremely demanding workout, combined with his large chakra reserves and the very good amount of control he had over his chakra, Naruto could likely already beat any genin out there. Now, taijutsu is simply a basic form of jutsu that typically does not require chakra, but chakra may be used to enhance techniques. Taijutsu generally require no hand seals to perform and are much quicker to use than ninjutsu or jinjutsu. Taijutsu is simply put, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Taijutsu is something that everyone, including most demons use in combat, and there are many different styles. The style I will be teaching you is called Kitsuniken, Fox Fist, and is a style I myself came up with many years ago when I was under the command of Inari-sama, Fox God. 
Akane paused for a moment before continuing, Now, the style I'm going to teach you actually takes the essence of a fox and imbues it into your fighting, meaning that it requires the use of a combination of feints and quick counterattacks to weak and vital areas. We use trickery every chance we get to deceive our opponents and create openings in their guard to exploit, much like a fox. To use this style requires a great amount of speed, flexibility, dexterity, constitution, and endurance. Is that why you always make sure I exhaust myself to the point where I damn near pass out every time I train? asked Naruto. The exercises that Akane often made him do were always extremely exhausting and often painful, several times he had been so tired that he had fallen asleep in the training field. Those were the few times he cursed the vixen in his head. Yes, this style is not made for humans. It requires more energy and ability than a regular human can produce, Akane hummed in thought. I had been debating on teaching you this style until you turned into a Hanyu, but I feel it would be better if you got a decent grasp on it sooner, rather than later. Head home and come into the seal so I can begin working on this style with you. Yes, ma'am. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf Another year passed and Naruto continued to grow and improve. His nights in the seal were now spent working on his taijutsu, which Akane had shown him. For the first four months this had consisted of going through the katas that he was taught, his friend and mentor would correct him when his stances went wrong, often making him go through all of them again if he made a mistake. During that time she would always comment on the various attacks that could be done from each position, and the best way to counterattack when someone would make a specific move. When Akane had deemed him passable in the taijutsu katas she moved on to sparring. Because of his a, lack of a sparring partner, and b, Akane wanting to see him so she can correct his flaws, she had Naruto spar with her in the mindscape. Sparring being more like beating the holy hell out of Naruto and then telling him what he did wrong. Come on Naruto-kun, you have to do better than that. Akane shouted in a sing-song voice that she knew would bother him and make him angry enough to make mistakes. Naruto never liked to be looked down upon. Grr. Naruto growled as he stood up, I'll show you. He came in hard, moving quite fast for someone who was only seven years old. However, that was nowhere near fast enough to catch her off guard. As Naruto moved in he aimed a claw swipe at Akane's midsection. This was met with the red head using a hand to subtly shift his attack away from her, while at the same time using her other hand to launch a fast strike that caught the blonde in the solar plexus. Naruto gasped and likely would have flown back several feet and landed on his back, but Akane had grabbed his left wrist and pulled him before he could get away. She spun around 180 degrees, taking Naruto with her before she let go, releasing the blonde and sending him flying several feet away, where he hit the ground rolled along the ground before coming to a stop several feet away. You're not thinking clearly anymore, Akane admonished, you can't let yourself go off half-cocked and expect to win. Oftentimes it's not the stronger opponent who wins, but the one who thinks with the clearest head. You are g, right, Naruto winced as he sat up and rubbed his chest, sorry. Don't apologize, just get back up and start again, this time, with a calm mind. Naruto took a deep breath as he stood up, his legs felt a little wobbly but he managed not to fall over. Looking up at his opponent he saw her standing there with the same smirk she had on every time they sparred. Okay, here I go, he breathed, right before charging at her. He came in with several high-low claw strikes that were aimed at the vital points in the human body, septum, larynx, clavicle, solar plexus, floating ribs, radius bone, inner thigh and several other areas of weakness. When using this form of taijutsu, it was necessary to have intimate knowledge of the inner workings of the creature you were fighting. Akane had made Naruto study up on the human body by going to the library, which he had been able to use ever since the Hokage had the previous librarian who worked there arrested and a more malleable one had taken her place. Akane weaved through the strikes, lightly deflecting every attack that might have come close to hitting her. She was impressed with how good Naruto had become in just under a year, it showed just how determined and intelligent the blonde really was. She almost felt it was a shame that he had to hide it from everyone else. Oh well, 
their loss. Not bad Narukin, Akane teased before lashing out with a soft edge strike to the throat. It was so fast that Naruto hadn't even seen the attack before he was on his knees, wheezing as he tried to take in a breath but couldn't due to having his throat temporarily closed from the strike. A minute later he was on his back again, in a slight daze after his nose had a meeting with Akane's knee. I think that's enough for now, Akane said as she walked over to where he had landed after her strike. It's been about two hours non-stop fighting, you're improving well. Naruto blinked several times in an effort to get the stars out of his eyes, he sat up a few moments later and looked at Akane. How strong do you think I'll be when I graduate, he asked. It's hard to say, said Akane, sitting down as her tail spread out behind her. On pure power alone, you'll be able to beat any jonin you ever run across, maybe even a kage, though you won't have the experience that they do. That was something she would need to help him with, sometime soon she would have to help him with his first kill. But that was for another time. And speaking of graduating, she paused and took a deep breath, I think you should fail your first two years. What? Naruto gave her a shocked, wide-eyed look, why? Because we need people to believe that you're not a threat until I can change you, she said. If people saw what you were capable of right now, and if you graduated too soon, they would assume you were dangerous and it could get out of hand. Well how long will it be until you change me? I need my Yuki to fully integrate into your chakra coils, so I would say about. Five years, Akane looked thoughtful for a moment and nodded, yes, five years should do it. So. When I'm twelve then? Yes. Naruto thought about what she was saying, he really didn't want to wait two extra years to graduate. But. Fine, he said, I understand what you're saying. I'll wait. I'm sorry Narutakun, she told him, placing a hand on his left leg, but at least this way you'll also be with people your own age. You know that doesn't really matter to me, he told her as he grabbed her hand and began to play with her fingers, an odd habit he had never gotten out of when he was younger and she used to tell him stories. You're the only person I care about. Akane felt herself blush, why does he always have to say the sweetest damn things? And so innocently too. She had never been in this situation before and had no clue why she was acting this way. Could I, could it really be? She wondered, but quickly shook her head. He's just a kid, there's no way I could be in love with a seven-year-old boy. But if that were the case why was it that her heart would flutter every time he cuddled up to her when they were done training? Why was it that she couldn't get him off of her mind? Maybe. I do feel something, she admitted as she looked down at Naruto who was staring around her cell with a frown. But he's too young right now, while I don't really care about age he wouldn't even understand the concepts of a relationship for several more years. I'll wait and see what develops when he gets older, much older. Is something wrong Naruto-kun? asked Akane. Yeah. Naruto's frown continued as he looked over at her, I was just looking around the mindscape. I've been thinking about this for a while, and I don't like how bleak it is. Is there a way to change it? I. Akane paused and looked at him curiously, tilting her head. I don't know, very few beings can actually use powers that affect the mind and even fewer can access their mindscape. Even most demons are incapable of accessing their mind. It's a very rare skill, the only reason you can do it is because I'm sealed inside of you. I see. Naruto thought for several moments as he looked around. Nodding to himself he closed his eyes and began to concentrate. Akane looked at Naruto oddly and opened her mouth to ask him what he was doing when she saw something that shocked her. From the point where Naruto was sitting, a ripple was spreading out, and when it left, only white could be seen. In only a few seconds, the knee-deep water, the cage, the dark craggy walls and the barely illuminated landscape was gone. In its place was nothing more than what could be considered a white space, where there was no difference between the floor, the walls or the ceiling and the entire area just seemed to go on. Akane actually felt slightly queasy just looking at the white area that seemed to give no sense of direction. Another ripple soon spread out from Naruto, 
however this one left green in its place. Not just green Akane realized with shock, but grass. Lush looking green grass a few inches. Tall, it spread out from underneath Naruto and began to encompass the floor. Starting from a point above her, blue began to spread out along walls and ceiling. Where the walls and ceilings had previously been was a light blue sky, with a sprinkling of clouds and a bright yellow sun. Trees and other foliage soon began to sprout up from the ground, covering the area to create a forest. The entire process only took several minutes. Before Akane could marvel at what just happened a soft gasp of breath alerted her to Naruto, who was laying on his back looking exhausted. Sweat marred his bar and he was breathing heavily, as if he had just done one of the workout routines she had given him. Crawling over to the blonde Akane sat back down and crossed her legs, bringing Naruto's head into her lap where she began to play with his hair. You do know what you just did is impossible right, she said, grinning to hide the surprise she herself felt from seeing what had just transpired. No one without mind powers should be able to do what you did. Perhaps I have mind powers and you just don't know it, Naruto smiled as he sighed in content as Akane's fingers lightly raked over his scalp. Closing his eyes he leaned into the redhead's touch. No, she looked at in amusement, the only clan that received the powers of the mind are the Yamanakas because of a service they gave to Kami several hundred years ago, and the Rikudu Senmin who had done the gods a great justice and was rewarded with the Samsara eyes. And I don't have mind powers, so there is no way I could have passed them on to you. Perhaps I'm just awesome then. Akane laughed, perhaps you are. Her eyes softened a tad as she looked at him, you're exhausted, get some rest, I'll take care of you. Um K, Naruto said with a soft yawn, night. Good night, Akane whispered as Naruto went out like a light. That entire night she watched him as he slept, gently running her hands through his hair. Sarutobi looked at the young blonde who was like a grandson to him, giving him a sheepish and slightly ashamed look. Narutakun, he said exasperatedly, this is the second time you failed. I'm not sure what to do anymore. It wasn't my fault, Dedabeo. Naruto shouted loudly enough that the windows rattled and Sarutobi had to cover his ears. It was that stupid Kimiiko. He hates me, he always sends me out of class. And he never lets me participate in any of the activities. He hates me. Narutakun, Sarutobi said with a disappointed look, teachers go through several tests to ensure they do not show any favoritism or refusal to teach another student. Perhaps if you actually took your studies seriously, and not skipped class so much, you wouldn't have failed. Naruto scratched his head for a moment before giving him a sheepish look, I'm sorry Ajizen, I really did try. I just, class is always so boring. I don't care when the whatever law for lumber was made. I want to learn to be a ninja. The look the aging Hokage gave Naruto was a look between exasperated and amused, Narutakun, if you want to be Hokage, then it is important to learn these things. A Hokage isn't just a fighter, he is a leader and it is his job to make decisions that affect the entire village. He gave the sheepish looking blonde a serious stare, understand? Of course I do. Naruto shouted, I promise, next time, I'll pass for sure. Then you'll have no choice but to hand over that hat Ajizen. I'm sure you will, Sarutobi said with a humoring smile. He watched as the excitable blonde ran out of the door and sighed, wondering just what he was going to do with that child. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf So what should I do now I wonder? Naruto asked himself, it was summer and he had just failed the academy for the second time like Akane wanted him to. He was now eight years old and would be placed with the kids his age next year. That meant he had an entire summer with nothing but training and pranks lined up. Actually, there's some place I would like you to go, Akane said, interrupting his musings. Before he could ask the obvious question, the demoness spoke again, go behind the Hokage monument, it should be somewhere around there. She had decided that he was old enough to learn of his heritage, she had been working with him for a long time now, and he had grown a lot. She was positive he was mature enough to handle it. Okay, Naruto said, 
turning around and beginning to head in the opposite direction. He wasn't really sure where he was going but figured that Akane would tell him when he got there. The area behind the monument was mainly forest, with only a few small ponds dotting the area. It was uninhabited by any buildings or people. Naruto was curious about why that was, but didn't think on it long. After nearly an hour of searching Naruto finally asked, Okay, what is it I'm looking for? In a minute, keep going forward, we're almost there. Naruto sighed but did as told, walking forward for several more minutes. Stop. Halting, Naruto looked around to see what Akane thought was here. When he couldn't find anything he frowned, so what am I looking for? Can't you feel it? asked Akane. Feel what? Reach out with your chakra and you'll see, she replied cryptically. Naruto did as told, summoning some chakra and sending it out in a pulse just like Akane had told him. When he did that the blonde saw an odd shimmer in the air, a wavy form similar to what one would find in the summer heat. What's that? asked Naruto, curious since he had never seen something like that before. A genjutsu, Akane answered, Genjutsu are techniques that are employed in the same fashion as ninjutsu, requiring chakra and hand seals. However, the primary difference between the two is that the effects of genjutsu are illusionary, instead of attacking the victim's body, like taijutsu or ninjutsu, genjutsu techniques manipulate the flow of chakra in the victim's brain, thus causing a disruption in their senses. I know what they are you know, Naruto said with a pout, you did explain them to me. Right, sorry, Akane said, looking a little sheepish even though Naruto could not see her. So you want me to dispel it? Yes, do you remember how? There are several ways to dispel a genjutsu, the first is to cut off the flow of one's chakra and then release the chakra in a greater amount than the genjutsu required, and the second is to cause physical pain to yourself to disrupt its flow. Very good, Akane said, however, that won't work for this one. This genjutsu is an area-wide genjutsu that has likely been here for several years, at least eight. So how do I dispel it? You can't, you lack the finesse to dispel something like this, Akane said, smirking as she waited for him to get the answer. Naruto scowled, then why are we, he stopped as the answer came to him, you can dispel it, can't you? Excellent job. Yes, I can dispel it. Well I've already given you permission to take control when you feel the need, so do your thing. Naruto's eyes soon shifted from blue to red with black slits, looking around Akane spoke in a very soft language that Naruto didn't understand. A few moments later there was an almost gentle and undetectable pulse of Yuki, before the air around began to shimmer. A few feet away a decent-sized two-story house appeared in front of them, wavering in front of them like a ghost before it became solid. Where are we? asked Naruto, what is this place? Go in and you'll find out. Naruto frowned, Akane was being really cryptic today. Normally, she would just come right out and tell him what was going on. He decided to think about that later and just go in to get his answers. As he began to walk towards the house he examined it in more detail, it was a fairly nice-looking house made of a combination of brick and wood, right in front of it was what looked like it had at one point been a flower garden of some kind but had overgrown with weeds and other forms of flora. Aside from that the house was very nice. Hey Akanakan, how did you know this house was here? asked Naruto as that particular thought occurred, she seemed to know her way around Kanoha pretty well considering she had been more busy destroying the village than observing it. You don't think the day I attacked was the only other time I've ever been to Kanoha do you? asked Akane, sounding amused. Naruto frowned, so you've been in Kanoha before? How come no one ever saw you? They did, they just never noticed who I was. As you've obviously seen I don't always look like a giant nine-tailed fox. Naruto blinked in surprise at that, before remembering she was likely in her human form when visiting. So when were the other times you had come to Kanoha? Actually, I was here before Kanoha was ever built, she told Naruto, shocking the blonde. I, along with the eight other bijou were sent here by Kami to complete a task, when we accomplished that task, Kami gave us our own lands to look after. 
Being the strongest of the nine and a being of fire, I was given Hai Nil Kuni, the nation with the largest amount of land, to look after. It was our job to protect and act as the guardian of the lands we had been given, and we did so for nearly a thousand years. The one you know as the Shodame Hokage had actually come to me to ask for permission to settle on this land. I was there at Kanoha's founding. Wow, Naruto's mental voice held an odd tone to it, causing Akane to snicker. The blonde frowned a moment later, wait, so why do people think the bijou are nothing more than monsters? Akane was silent for a moment, then she sighed as she thought of how best to explain this particular piece of history. Times change Narutakun, she said softly, deciding to be up front with her knowledge. People change, over the years humans began to fear the power of us bijou, they tried to capture and subdue us out of that fear. I remember hearing about Ichibi no Shikaku, one-tailed tanuki, getting sealed in a tea kettle, the nibi no Nikomata, two-tailed cat, getting sealed into a shrine. One by one all of the bijou became sealed away because our powers were so feared. All but me. Of course, you can only seal a bijou into an object up to the yanbi, Akane could almost feel Naruto's amazement at her story and would have smiled had the story not depressed her. When the gobi was sealed humans soon began to realize that they could use the power of the bijou as weapons. It was actually the Rokubi no Raiju, six-tailed weasel, getting sealed into a human and that human using its power to destroy a neighboring village that caused what you call the First Great Shinobi War. Whoa! Naruto muttered, stunned at hearing the true reason for the First War. It was much different than what they were taught at the academy. It was much cooler too, in his opinion anyways. Anyways, I'll tell you some more later, for now, you need to go inside the house. Standing in front of the door Naruto looked at the door knob with a frown, there were several weird squiggly lines on the knob that reminded the blonde of the seal on his stomach. Akane noticed what he was looking at and made to reassure him, don't worry about those seals Naruto-kun, place your hand on the door knob and it should open. Okay, he reached out with a hand and grasped the door knob. However, the moment he did Naruto began to feel weaker, it was with a start that he realized the door was sucking out his chakra. He tried to pull his hand off, only to find that it was somehow stuck. Placing his other hand on his wrist, and a foot on the door he tried to pry it off to no success. Calm down Narutakun, Akane said, trying to keep the blonde from hurting himself, it's just taking the amount of chakra you need to open the door. As she said this the door stopped pulling on Naruto's chakra, and there was a soft. Click signifying the door was unlocked. Naruto stared at it wearily before, with some prodding along from Akane, he opened the door. The first room he stepped into looked like some kind of living room. The area was carpeted with thick, rich-looking carpet. On the farthest side away from him was a fireplace, with a glass coffee table next to it and several couches around it. There were a few pictures of a man with spiked golden blonde hair that looked very similar to his own, and a beautiful red-haired woman hanging along the walls. Despite no fire going and no one having lived in here, which was obvious from the several layers of dust that covered the furniture, it gave off a very homely feel. Akanakan, whose house are we in? asked Naruto as he walked around the room and looked at all of the pictures. Each one held either the golden-haired man or the red-haired woman, some had the man standing with what Naruto could recognize as a squad of genin, a boy with spiky silver hair, another boy with spiky black hair and goggles, and a young girl with triangle markings on her cheeks, there were pictures of the man with another man, who had long, spiky white hair and was wearing red kabuki clothes. There were pictures of the redhead standing with a squad of umbu who all had their masks off, or having her with her own squad of what looked like genin, even if the little black-haired child looked far too young to be a genin, and pictures of the man and the woman wrapped around each other. Naruto didn't know why, but he felt like he should know these two. Akane sighed as she sensed his thoughts, Naruto-kun, why don't you go up to the second floor, enter the last door on the right and then enter the mindscape. Naruto raised an eyebrow, a part of him just wanted her to answer his questions. Why did he feel like he should know those people in the pictures? Why did he feel like he had finally come home when entering this house, despite having never been here before? 
and why did Akane seem to know where to go in here? However, he knew her well enough to know that until he did what she told him to, Akane would not budge. He followed her instruction, walking through the door in front of him and into a hallway. He turned left, since that was the side with the staircase and walked towards it, and then up the stairs, absently taking note that there seemed to be a basement since the stairs led down as well as up. When he reached the second floor he looked around and found himself in another hallway. He walked through the hall and stopped at the last door on the right. A sudden feeling of trepidation came over him. What would he find on the other side of this door? Why did he get the feeling that he was standing on the threshold of some life-changing moment? These were questions that he had no answer to. Narudakun, for some reason Akane's soft, alto voice made him relax, the feeling of trepidation was still there. But it was much more manageable. Yes. R. You alright? I'm fine, Naruto took a deep breath, blowing it out he opened the door and stepped through. He had not been sure what he would find on the other side, but what he did was certainly not what he expected. The walls were painted a soft orange with blue strips, all around the room were large, stuffed toys, and in the center of the room was a cradle. Naruto knew this was a nursery for a newborn. For whatever reason the sight of this room caused unshed tears to gather at the corner of the blonde's eyes. What is this place? Naruto asked Akane, why have you brought me here? This was going to be your room, Narutokun, Akane said softly. Naruto's eyes widened, what? Come into the seal, all will be explained. Story of the ten-tailed wolf within the seal Naruto found Akane sitting over by the lake he had created, her knees were drawn up to her chest, arms wrapped around her legs and her head resting her on knees. When she saw Naruto she moved into a cross-legged position as he sat in front of her. She sighed as she saw the look he was giving her, it was a slightly confused look of trepidation, like he knew she was keeping something from him and all the trust he had placed in her had been misplaced. It was a look she had never wanted to see on the blonde and hoped to never see again. I promise to tell you everything I know, all I ask is that you don't talk until I'm finished. Okay, the young blonde before her gave a sharp nod of assent. Now, where to begin? I suppose I should start by saying that I had been living in Kanoha for six months before I attacked, or I guess it would be more accurate to say, was forced to attack. She saw Naruto open his mouth to ask a question and held up a hand, all will be explained later, I promise. When the young blonde closed his mouth she continued, every decade I would head out of my home, a secret home I had built many centuries ago that no one other than myself can even reach, much less enter. I would travel around Hai no Kuni and gather information on what has been going on in my land, as is my job as its guardian. Kanoha had been my last stop, mainly because it is this village where most of the important information and happenings come from. When I got here, I had done my usual routine, going into bars, which are always a prime source of information no matter the era, charming men with my beauty in order to find out if anything important has happened and exploring the town just so I could mingle with the people and make sure I knew the general atmosphere. While here however, something interesting happened, Akane took a deep breath before plunging on, I met your mother and father. Naruto gaped at the woman in front of him, she had met his parents. As an orphan, Naruto had always wondered about who his parents were. The matron had told him that they had left him because they didn't want a demon for a son, the old Hokage had told him that he didn't know who his parents had. Been, even though Naruto could tell the man was lying. It had been the reason he had stopped asking about them, he hadn't wanted to listen to one of the only two people who cared for him lie. Yet here was Akane, saying she knew who his parents were. Why hadn't she told him? Why did she wait until now to inform him about his parents? I had actually met them when I was wandering the town, she continued on, unaware of Naruto's thoughts. Some pervert with white hair had attempted to make a pass at me, and after I had finished beating him into the ground I was confronted with your mother, stars in her eyes, telling me how cool I was. Akane favored him with a soft smile, your mother's name was Kushina Uzumaki, she was a kunoichi from the now-destroyed Yuzushiogakure, which is located on an island just a few miles off of Mizu no Kuni. 
Like all Uzumaki members she had bright red hair and purple eyes, and the fiercest temper you would ever see. I remember talking with her and telling her that I was actually a trader looking to establish a shop here. She introduced me to Minato Namikaze, the Yandame Hokage. And your father, it was at these words that Naruto began breathing heavily. M, my father. Is the Yandame, asked Naruto in a state of shock. The Yandame Hokage had always been a mixed subject for him, on one hand, the man was considered the most powerful shinobi since the time of the Rikudu Senin, even Akane respected him for his battle prowess. On the other, he was the man who had sealed Akane inside of him, the reason he had no family or friends, it was his fault that he had been abused, neglected, and beaten since the day he was born. And now, Akane was telling him that this man was his father. Yes, Akane said sadly, he was your father. Your mother was actually pregnant with you when I was doing my negotiations with the Yandame. She sighed, Minato Namikaze was a man unlike any other, calm, collected and so highly intelligent that I sometimes felt dumb in his presence. However, he had one glaring weakness, which was also his most incredible strength. His trust in others, it was this trust that made him decide to seal me into you when I went on a rampage. I, I see, it was all he could think of to say. Never in a million years would he have suspected something like this. Of course, now that he thought about it what she was telling him made sense. Like just why out of all the possible children that could have been chosen to hold Akane, he was the one picked. What better person to hold such power than one's own son? There was also Naruto's looks, he had always noticed the similarities between himself and the Yandame. In fact he was surprised that he hadn't recognized the man in the pictures downstairs, granted he had been more focused on the house itself and wondering why the place felt familiar, but he should have recognized the man. Ever since he had first seen the picture of the man in the Hokage's office he had seen the similarities, but he had written it off as a coincidence. After all, who would be willing to do something like seal a powerful demon inside of your own family? He grit his teeth as he felt tears leaking out of the corners of his eyes, doing his best to hold the flood of tears that threatened to overwhelm him. He had never cried before, not since the beating he had received that sent him to Akane, no matter how bad things had gotten he had refused to shed tears and he would not do so now. Just as these thoughts came to mind, he found himself wrapped up in a delicate hug as Akane let his head rest on her bosom. It's okay to cry, Narutakun. She whispered softly while a hand began to gently run through his hair, messaging his scalp. Naruto felt a tear run down his cheek, then a sob racked his body, finally, the dam holding up his emotions broke. His body heaved with earth-shattering sobs as he remembered all the times he had ever been abused, all the times he had been neglected and isolated at the orphanage, every single beating and insult he had received. Throughout it all, Akane held him, whispering words in his ears. Just let it all out Narutakun, she said, letting him cling to her tightly, everything will be all right. The amount of time Naruto cried was interminable, time meant next to nothing while within the seal. Eventually, his tears ceased and his body stopped shaking. He slumped against Akane, whose only response was to hold him tighter. Why didn't you tell me before now, he asked, his voice cracked and emotional from all he had learned. Would it have done any good? Akane asked in a soft voice. Would it have changed anything? I wanted to make sure you were mature enough to realize what it meant to be the son of two such famous people. What do you mean? asked Naruto, accepting her explanation at face value, his previous anger at her forgotten. She had never lied to him, and he had never asked her if she knew his parents, so in a way it was his fault too. Naruto, Minato Namikaze was famous because he had killed nearly 1,000 ninja in a single battle thanks to his heration, Akane said. Not only was he the most feared man in the world, he was widely hated by IWA, who feel he is the reason they lost the war. If people knew I was his son they'd try to kill me, wouldn't they, said Naruto. Yes, and we already have to deal with the fools here, Akane joked, trying to lighten the situation. Having to deal with both internal and external threats would not be easy. 
Naruto chuckled but it came out sounding more like a sob as he buried his face deeper into Akane's chest. Thank you, Akanakan, for not keeping this from me, he said softly. Akane smiled as she kissed his hair, you're welcome. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf The next morning Naruto woke up to find himself still in the room that had been set up for him. On Akane's suggestion, Naruto began exploring the house. The first two floors weren't much, the first floor held a kitchen-slash-dining room, the living room he had entered from, and an office. The second floor was just filled with bedrooms, three guest rooms, the one baby room, and the master bedroom. They were all well furnished with nice, albeit, out-of-date and dusty furniture. It was the basement, however, that drew Naruto's attention. The entire basement was in a word, gigantic. Larger than the house that sat on top of it, the basement consisted of three floors. The first floor contained a dojo, the room was just a large flat mat with a large mirror on the far wall. All along the walls, ceiling and floor were those odd-looking lines. Those are seals Narutakun, Akane told him as he stared, that's one of the things we'll be learning about here. Naruto nodded as he explored the next two floors down. The second basement level was an armory, it was filled with racks upon racks of weapons, many of which he didn't recognize but Akane pointed several out to him. That sickle with the metal chain and iron weight at the end is called a kuzurigama, the long staff is called a bow staff, oh, and those little dagger-like weapons are called juddy. What about those ones in the case, asked Naruto, referring to the tripronged kunai in the glass case. They were bigger than the average kunai, with a wooden handle that the blonde noticed had more of those seals on it. They were mounted in a glass case that was hung on the wall at the far end, there were nearly a hundred as far as Naruto could count. Those were the special weapon that your father designed his most prized jutsu with, Akane said. I can't tell you much about it because frankly, I don't understand the mechanics behind it, but once you get more knowledge on how it works, I'm sure you'll be able to recreate them. Now, there's one more floor for you to look at. This one is the most important and where we'll be getting our information for the jutsu you'll be learning. The last floor was a library, easily twice the size of the Hokage Library, with nearly 100 shelves filled with all kinds of books, jutsu scrolls, schematics for exotic-looking weapons and maps. The library was divided into several categories, non-shinobi-related material in one section, taijutsu, genjutsu, ninjutsu, fuenjutsu and kenjutsu all had their own sections as well. Each section was further divided by subsections, the jutsu going by rank E, D, C, B, A and S go into the ninjutsu section Narutakun, Akane instructed, there's a jutsu in here that I think would be great boon for you. Which jutsu is that? asked Naruto as he began scrolling through the ninjutsu section of the library. I believe I remember your mother calling it, Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf After learning the Kage Bunshin Naruto's training began to skyrocket as he used the Jutsu to its fullest effect. The reason for this was just because of what the Jutsu did. The Kage Bunshin no Jutsu could Create any number of copies of the user capable of cohabitating with their surroundings, performing Jutsu, and engaging in battle. They dispersed in a puff of smoke when sufficiently damaged or at the user's discretion. When clones are created, the user's chakra was evenly distributed among them, making it easy for the user to quickly expend all their chakra. The best part about this jutsu was that any knowledge a clone gained during its existence was transferred to the user when it dispersed. For normal people this wouldn't mean much, but for some who had even more chakra than the current Hokage, it was the perfect training jutsu. Every morning Naruto would make upwards of 100 clones, a feat he could do thanks to his near-perfect chakra control, harnessed from three and a half years of ridiculous training, and Akane letting him use her Yuki to reinforce the clones. He would divide them into three groups, an elemental manipulation group, a fuenjutsu group, and a chakra control group for his ever-increasing reserves. His chakra control was more a matter of maintaining control as his chakra continued to increase. Having perfected many of the exercises Akane had given him, even the ones that demons did for their yuki, he had no real need to gain more. 
The only control exercises he couldn't do were the ones that required what the blonde jokingly referred to as bijou amounts of chakra, meaning up to five tails worth of chakra. His fuinjutsu was progressing slowly, though thanks to his innate talent in the subject it was faster than other people twice his age went. Right now he couldn't do more than make basic storage scrolls and exploding tags, but it was progress and he had only started last month. He had yet to truly touch on any ninjutsu beyond some of the more basic ones, mainly because most ninjutsu seemed to be elemental in nature. Because of this, Akane had him get some chakra paper to learn what his affinity was. He stared at the torn, burnt and crumpled pieces of paper on the ground. The reaction he had gotten was not expected, having literally shredded itself to pieces before several pieces burst into flames and the other half wrinkled. So, fire, wind and lightning then, asked Naruto unsurely. Yes, Akane said, also staring at the paper, though she had more glee than shock. It looks like you have three elements, strong ones too. I would suspect your main element is wind, since it was the one that showed up on the paper first, your father was a wind element so it's not surprising. The fire you got from me, being a being of fire and all that. And the lightning? Your mother, though it is surprising since her main element was water. Akane shrugged, but she did have a small lightning affinity as well. The first element they trained in was wind, being Naruto's main element. The first step had been to split a leaf using his chakra, it was a little difficult but thanks to his clones he had managed it within the month. The key, Naruto had learned, was to imagine your chakra as two sharp edges grinding against each other. It was after he had accomplished this that Akane spoke of her plan to give Naruto some experience as a ninja. Naruto-kun, I think we're done for the day. Head on home and get into the seal. I take it you have something important to tell me? Akane only ever asked him to come into the seal if she had something important to talk to him about. Her simply, yes, confirmed his thoughts. All right. Naruto shouted, getting the attention of his Kage Bunshin. It's time to head out, begin dispelling yourselves in groups of five every five minutes, he had learned from experience that if he had them dispel all at once it would knock him out cold from an overload of information. When there are only three of your left, place all of the scrolls back into the house. OSSU. The clones saluted and began dispelling. In the meantime Naruto made his way back to his apartment, having discussed with Akane the benefits of keeping appearances by living in his apartment as opposed to the Namike's household. Entering his apartment Naruto took a quick shower before laying down on his bed and entering the seal. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf So what did you want to talk to me about Akanakan? Akanakan? Naruto frowned as he looked around and saw that the red head wasn't there. Frowning he began to walk around in an effort to search for her. As he was walking through the forest, a sound caught his attention. He stopped and listened for a moment, straining his ears to hear the noise, he soon discovered that it was singing. Well, more like humming, since there were no words to the song. He listened for a moment, thinking it was easily the most beautiful sound he had ever heard when he realized that the only two people in the seal were him and Akane. I didn't know Akane could sing so well, he mumbled to himself, then again, I've always thought she had a beautiful voice. He shook his head and ran towards the clearing where he heard her, Hey Akanakan, you said you wanted to. Wanted to. Wanted. Naruto tailed off and felt his eyes widen to epic proportions as he saw a sight that most men, and possibly many women, would die for. Akane was currently bathing in one of the lakes that he had made within his mindscape, this one had a large waterfall, which she was currently standing next to. Completely naked. Her light tan skin was glistening in the light as droplets of water ran down her perfect, unblemished and tantalizing skin, running over every curve and contour of her gorgeous body, which was far too perfect to be human. She currently had her back slightly turned to Naruto, presenting him with a three-quarters view, just enough for the swell of her right breast to be in perfect sight of him, and the water where she was standing only reached to a little higher than mid-thigh, allowing her perfectly tight ass to be seen for all, or at least, to be seen for Naruto. Her nine tails that were sticking out of her back where the tailbone was, 
were also cleaning her, rubbing against different parts of her body and adding a sense of erotica to the scene. Her eyes were currently closed as she continued to hum, lifting her hands and rubbing some water on them, so she didn't notice the blonde who was currently gawking at her. Naruto, who had yet to understand the mechanics behind what makes males and females different, beyond the obvious differences in shape, was being given a prime view of what a perfect woman was today. Having no idea about the birds and the bees, and still being too young to really understand the sexuality and sensuality of what he was seeing, he was unable to cope with the sight of a nude Akane. Because of this, Naruto's mind shut down, his eyes glazed over and he blacked out while somehow remaining in an upright position. Finished with her bath Akane sighed in relief, ever since Naruto had created this mindscape things had been much easier for her, it helped greatly that she could not only take some time to wash herself while being surrounded by nature, but that she could also feel the grass when she walked on it, or the water she was currently bathing in. It wasn't quite as nice as being in the real world, but it was good enough that she would be eternally grateful to Naruto for making this for her. Maybe I should give him a special thanks, she thought with a giggle, right before she sighed. If only he weren't so young. Turning around she opened her eyes and blinked in surprise as she saw Naruto, eyes completely glazed over and mouth ajar, standing not but a few feet from the lake. She blushed a bit as she realized that she had taken too long, obviously she should have taken a bath quicker, rather than luxuriate in the water. She felt embarrassed at being seen by the eight-year-old boy. However that soon gave way to her slightly mischievous side as she stalked up to him and, gently swaying her hips as she stood not but a foot in front of him. Like what you see Naruto-kun, she asked, modulating her voice in a way that would send any man into an orgasm or die from the most intense nose bleed ever. She frowned when she got no response and looked to see Naruto, eyes still glazed over, it was only now that she was up close that she could see he wasn't looking at her so much as through her. Naruto, she said, leaning down so she could look into his eyes. Are you okay? Hey, Naruto, when she got no response Akane poked him in the forehead, and watched in shock as he simply fell over. Huh. I guess his mind simply wasn't ready to see me like this. She sighed, then again he is still a little boy. Still this is going put a bit of a damper on my plans, and now I'm going to have to teach him about sex. Channeling some yuki into the air around her, she created a standard red kimono with a slit that ran up the side. She picked up Naruto, who by now had gone limp and sat herself down against a tree and then placed Naruto's head on her lap. She began to play with his hair as she waited for the young boy to wake up, absently wondering how he would react when he did. She didn't have to wait long as Naruto's eyes soon fluttered a bit before blinking the light out of them. Welcome back to the land of the living Naruto-kun, Akane gave him a foxy grin, did you enjoy the view? View. Naruto slurred, still slightly out of it. It was then that he was inundated with images of finding Akane bathing. He shot up off of her faster than Minato Namikaze ever could, his face burning red with embarrassment as he bowed to her, I'm so, so sorry Akanakan. I had no idea you were, I mean, I knew you were here, since you live here, but I didn't, you know, that I was, it was just, it's okay Naruto-kun, she said, halting his stuttered attempts at an apology. I'm not mad, this was my fault. I called you into the seal and took too long with my bath. I should have realized the time. Ooh, well. Naruto trailed off, unsure what to say. Akane sighed and patted the spot beside her, why don't you sit down? It's a little early, but it would be best to get this lesson out of the way now that you've seen me in such a compromising position. Erm. What conversation is that? asked Naruto, still embarrassed about what had happened. Akane took a deep breath before she began explaining everything she knew about sex, sexual reproduction, romance between a man and woman and the differences between the two genders. Having lived for a thousand years, Akane knew a lot about sex, even though she herself was actually a virgin. The entire conversation took up several hours, and by the time she was done Naruto couldn't even look at her without his face turning a shade of red that put Akane's hair color to shame. 
She sighed, realizing her chance at getting Naruto his first kill would have to wait for now. There was no way he could deal with combat while in this situation, why don't you head on out of the seal and get some sleep? We'll continue training tomorrow, okay? Right, Naruto stuttered, disappearing from the seal as quick as he could. It was the first time he felt the need to get away from Akane, and the redhead couldn't help but sigh as she wondered what their relationship would be like now. I guess I'll just have to find out later, she mumbled as she decided to get some rest herself. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf Another month passed and since that night where Naruto learned far more about woman and sex than anyone his age ever should, things have been tense between him and Akane since then. The young blonde still barely found himself capable of even looking the young, looking, woman in the eye without blushing. Ever since that night he had had several vivid dreams filled with Akane in various situations like the one he had seen her naked, only he had also been involved. Dreams of an older version of himself and Akane. Doing acts that he was unprepared to do himself. Even worse, Naruto had found himself discreetly looking at the women of Kanoha whenever he walked through the village. It took a concerted effort on his part to keep himself from looking, and even then, it usually failed and he found himself comparing these women to the one that currently resided in his mind. He was starting to wonder if there may be something wrong with him, he had yet to even reach puberty and here he was staring at and comparing women's looks. Akane wasn't helping the situation either, sometimes she was just as bad as Naruto, unable to look him in the eye, or even speak to him. At other times she was extremely playful, teasing him beyond all reason with comments laced in innuendo, or even the occasional time where she would bend over and present him with a perfect view of her tight derriere or her ample cleavage. Naruto wasn't sure what to do, his body was unable to respond to these sensual acts, but his mind was far more developed than his body. A fact that was actually proven true during one of the few times Naruto and Akane actually had a peaceful moment here they didn't feel awkward around each other. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf Flashback Naruto had just finished getting his ass kicked by Akane, lasting nearly two hours against the vixen in their spar. It was something he had noticed that she did, the red had never let a spar go past two hours. She would fight just well enough to be slightly better than Naruto, then when the two-hour mark was up she would end it quicker than Naruto could say Kyubi. Good job, your improvement is astounding, Akane said in genuine admiration. Naruto just groaned as he pushed himself off the ground, wondering what hit him. It will feel different when you fight in your real body, since sparring here in this seal only helps you learn the stances. You will need to begin practicing your katas outside of the seal in order to ensure that your movements are ingrained in your muscle memory. Right, Naruto said, standing up and wobbling over to a lake. He looked at his body to see his clothes in ruins, while he was covered in sweat and bruises. He upsetly wondered how everything that happened in the seal could feel so real, despite this being nothing more than a representation of his mind. Shrugging the thoughts off Naruto and knelt down and began to wash his face off, splashing the water onto his face and rubbing vigorously. As he was doing that Naruto got a good look at his reflection on the water's surface. Akanakan, he said with a small frown. Yes, asked Akane, walking over to him. How come I look older in my reflection than I do in real life, his reflection in the water looked older than he did. He would have to say he looked around eleven years old, rather than his eight years of age. He had never gotten to see himself in the seal before, but he knew that when he looked in the mirrors at his apartment he didn't look. Like this. Oh, right, sorry I forgot to mention that this would happen. When Naruto looked up at her, Kane continued to explain, as I said before, this area we are currently residing in is called your mindscape, it is a mixture between a representation of the seal and your mind, which is my theory on why you can change it. The body you possess within this mindscape is not your real body, it is a representation of yourself. She stopped talking as she saw Naruto frown in thought, knowing he would get it, he was a lot smarter than most people gave him credit for. So. I look older, because my mind is older than my body? Something like that yes, she said, though that's simplifying things. You are a lot more intelligent and mature than any of the other kids your age. 
I suspect that the more you learn, and experience, the older your mental image gets. After all, age is more about life experiences than the number of years lived. That makes sense, Naruto said, looking back into the reflection of the lake with a thoughtful look on his face. Flashback End Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf, Naruto-kun, Akane said as Naruto finished his last taijutsu kata. They had decided that he would work on his taijutsu outside of the seal as well as inside, so while his clones were working on whatever task he had given them, he was working on ingraining his fighting style into muscle memory. Yes, Akanakan, asked Naruto, it had taken the entire month for him to start calling her that again, and even now, after all this time, he still blushed when he said her name. Thankfully Akane couldn't see it since she was inside the seal and could only see what he saw. I believe it's time we begin working on the task I had been about to assign to you. Before the incident, Naruto blushed at remembering what she was talking about. What is it? He heard the redhead take a deep breath within his mind. Naruto, I believe it's time you got your first kill. What? Naruto asked, shock evident in his voice. You want me to kill someone? He knew as a shinobi he would eventually have to kill if not in an assassination then in self-defense at least. But he had not expected to kill until, after, he became a shinobi. Narutakun, you're going to be a shinobi, she said as gently as possible, there was no way to truly sugarcoat this. As a shinobi, your village will eventually call upon you to kill. Unfortunately, there is no true way to prepare you to take another person's life, except for doing the deed yourself. But why do you want me to kill now, truth be told, the thought of killing someone else terrified him. Because I think it would be better if you were to get this out of the way now, rather than wait until you're on an important mission. Most humans freeze up during their first kill, and that can easily get you and your team killed. So you want me to kill someone in a controlled environment, asked Naruto, trying to understand what she wanted. As controlled as possible at least, Akane said with a shrug. This way, if necessary, I can take control of your body if you freeze up and go somewhere safe. I, I see your point, he said at last. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath, this was something he knew he would deal with eventually. Okay, how will we do this? We'll leave tonight. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf It was later in the night and Naruto was getting dressed in an outfit that no one in the village would ever suspect he had. Basic ninja gear similar to that of the umbu, sturdy black cargo pants, a black sleeveless shirt, two black armbands, black shinobi sandals, a black face mask that covered half his face from the nose down and all of his neck, black gloves and matte black shin and wrist guards. He had gotten them two months ago by using Akane's chakra to shape shift, a demonic ability to literally transform into someone else, to turn into a different person and buy them from on the higher quality shinobi stores. There were two kanai holsters strapped to his thighs, one on the left and another on the right. On the back was another holster, only this one was holding a basic ceiling scroll. Strapped across his back was a ninjato, a short sword with a straight blade and squared soba it was the standard ninja sword that most Umbu used. He had grabbed it from his parents' house since he felt it may prove useful. Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, Naruto muttered as he put his fingers into a ram sign. A single clone phased into existence, without a puff of smoke to show it had been created. It was a testament to how well Naruto could control his vast reserves of chakra. Ready Naruto-kun? asked Akane. Naruto placed his hands on the clone's shoulder, ready, he felt Akane begin to pour her yuki into the clone to reinforce it. The pair had learned early on that if they did this, not only would the clone last longer, but it could actually take a few hits before being dispersed. It had proven incredibly useful for sparring. I've given it about one tail's worth, so it should last for a month give or take a few days, Akane said. It shouldn't take that long for you to find a bandit camp of some kind, they are usually scattered all throughout Hai no Kuni. Right, I guess it's time to get going then. Naruto made his way outside and closed the door, then took to the roofs where he began to jump towards the north gate. When he got there, it was to see two Chunin guarding the gates. 
he wondered what the best way to get past them would be. He had to be unnoticed, it wouldn't do for the Hokage to be alerted that he was leaving the village. Despite being mass-hated, he was still a Jinchuriki and the Hokage and his ninja knew that he acted like a large deterrent. Something along the lines of fuck with us and we'll let our demon loose on you. Or something like that. It only took a moment for him to come up with a plan, using his perfect chakra control to create a kage. Bunshin without any extra chakra being expelled to alert the Chunin. Already knowing the plan the clone leapt down to the street and used the standard henge to turn into a crimson furred fox. Normally he would have used Akane's shape-shifting abilities, but since they were only Chunin had deemed it a waste as they were unlikely to be able to tell when someone was using a henge. That was mostly a Jonin skill. The clone revealed itself to the Chunin, who the moment they looked at it got angry looks on their faces and began to chase the fox who yipped and ran away. Idiots, Naruto shook his head at the display of stupidity and hatred they had shown as he dropped down from the building. He channeled a minuscule amount of chakra to his feet, in order to cushion his fall and ensure that he dropped to the ground silently. It was times like these he was thankful for Akane grinding him on his chakra control, as he made his way into the alley and looked out. There was no one around him, sending a mild pulse of chakra out in an expanded radius of 50 feet he determined that there were no ninja in the area either. Naruto put on a burst of speed as he ran through the north gate, which stayed open all night in case a squad of ANBU or any of the elite ninja came in late from a mission during the night. Naruto looked around as he sped along the road, checking his surroundings for only a moment before sending chakra to his legs. He jumped into the trees over to his left and began hopping from tree branch to tree branch. He had to admit, as he hopped through the trees, that there was something exhilarating about being outside of the village for the first time. It didn't look all that different from being in village, with the exception that there were no buildings around him now, but it was more of the feeling of being outside of the only place he had ever known. The sudden freedom that came with knowing he could do whatever he wanted and go wherever he wanted that got him excited. Try not to get caught up in the excitement Naruto-kun, Akane chided. Hee hee, sorry about that, Naruto said, feeling a little sheepish. I'm just so excited to finally be out of the village, even if it's only for a little while. That's okay, it's good that you're excited, truth be told she was glad that despite all that happened to him in the past and Naruto's growing maturity, that he could still act like an excited child. Just remember that you're actually here for a reason. Now, I think we're far enough away from Kanoha. Head groundside and stop for now. Naruto didn't question her as he dropped to the ground and waited for more instructions. Sit down, Akane said. Doing as told Naruto felt the familiar red energy that was Akane's yuki coming from the seal in his stomach. What are you doing, he couldn't help but ask, his curiosity getting the better of him. I'm sensing, she said. Before he could ask what she meant, Akane asked a question of her own, have you? Never wondered why I am the strongest of the nine bijou. Well, not really no, Naruto shrugged his shoulders as he saw the red yuki engulf his entire frame. It was fascinating to watch as he saw the yuki form into the outline of a fox, complete with ears on the top of his head and a swishing fox tail behind it. The energy looked almost alive. That's probably for the best, Akane mused, I doubt you would have figured it out. The reason I am the most powerful of the nine is actually very simple in its complexity. Unlike the other bijou, who rely on their own reserves, my yuki comes from nature itself. Nature itself? What do you mean, like you draw energy from nature or something? The demoness statement was slightly confusing to Naruto, who had never heard of something like this. Precisely. All life exudes energy, from the lowest plant to the highest life form on this earth, even humans are constantly expelling this energy. This energy is called natural energy and I have the ability to gather it into myself and use that energy to fill my own reserves of yuki, which on their own are far larger than any other bijou in existence anyways. This gives me unlimited power. Akane paused for a moment before continuing, because of this I also have several innate abilities that no other bijou has. 
I am so in tune with the natural energy of the world that I can sense everything around me and differentiate just what it is I'm sensing. Humans, exude a much different energy from plants and even other animals. Or I suppose a more accurate thing to say, would be that they exude more energy than other animals. So you're trying to sense something using this ability, asked Naruto. He was rather in awe of Akane's talent, being able to sense everything in your presence would be very useful and was far more impressive than what he had dubbed the chakra sonar. Which was very limited in its capacity to detect people and objects around him. I'm trying to find the nearest town. Hai no Kuni is filled with human settlements, and bandits often like to set up their camp near the smaller civilian population centers, less chances of the authorities catching them that way. I see. Naruto said before remaining silent and letting Akane do her work. He simply sat there and watched as the red Yuki moved and writhed with a life of its own. It was an hour later that Akane spoke up, I found one. Which way? North by northeast. Naruto stood up and was about to being traveling in that direction when Akane stopped him. We've done enough travel for today Naruto-kun, I want you to set up camp and get some rest. You can begin moving out tomorrow morning. Right, Naruto said, feeling slightly embarrassed at being corrected on something as basic as this. He reached into the holster behind him and pulled out a scroll, unraveling it on the ground before he channeled some chakra into it. The scroll had several basic amenities, a sleeping bag and several detection sealed tags that were used by the elite jonin of the village during solo missions. He created several kage bunshin and gave each of them a tag, making them move 50 feet away from the camp in an eight-point circle, where they placed the tags and activated them. Naruto felt the seal they were connected to activate on his arm, a sign that they were working and would alert him if anyone breached them. Now that he was feeling safe Naruto crawled into his sleeping back and drifted into a light sleep. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf It was around twelve o'clock the next day when Naruto arrived at the small town Akane had sensed. Small being something of an understatement when you compared this settlement with a village such as Kanoha. The entire village held only a few dozen houses, an inn and three stores that looked like a grocery store, a clothing store and a small eatery. Altogether the place was very quaint. Before entering the town Naruto had used a standard henge jutsu to turn himself into an 18-year-old civilian male with short brown and steel-gray eyes. The last thing he needed was for someone to wonder what an 8-year-old child was doing running around in shinobi clothing with a sword on his back. Head into the inn, Akane instructed as Naruto was looking around the town, that's usually a prime source of information in small towns like this. You'll want to rent a room, we don't know how long we'll be here and it would look suspicious if you spent all day around the inn for several days without renting a room out. Gotcha, Naruto replied and did as told. Entering the inn the current brown-haired Naruto looked around to see that it was about as quaint on the inside as the town was on the outside. Right in front of the door was a front desk where a homely-looking woman with the kind of friendly smile that would put just about anyone at ease was standing. Off to the left was a staircase that likely led to the rooms, and on the other side was a bar with several tables where a cute girl, who judging from her looks, was the daughter of the woman at the front desk was serving the few people who were sitting around at the tables. Hello, can I help you? asked the woman as Naruto walked up to the desk. Yes, I would like to rent a room for a few nights, Naruto said, I'm not sure how long I'll be staying but it will be at least two or three days at most. Very well, two nights will cost 100 ryu, all meals except breakfast cost extra, she told him. Naruto reached into his pocket and pulled out his wallet, he was thankful that his parents had left quite a bit of money in their bedroom, nearly 10,000 ryu, since he knew that he would be unable to even pay this much thanks to the civilians of Kanoha if they hadn't. He handed the money over and the woman smiled as she gave him a set of keys, thank you, sir. Your room will be the first door on the right. Please enjoy your stay. Thank you, Naruto. Smiled at the woman, reveling in the feeling of someone actually smiling at him. It was the first time anyone other than Akane or the old Hokage had done such a thing. Walking upstairs Naruto placed the key in the door she had specified, opened it, and walked in. 
The room wasn't that big, even though it was a tad bigger than his own bedroom in his apartment. But it had a nice cozy feel to it, with a soft-looking bed, a nightstand next to it, a dresser on the other side and a small armoire on the other side of the room. There wasn't much else other than a window that overlooked the town and a small door to his left that no doubt led to a restroom, but Naruto didn't need much. Dropping his henge Naruto unstrapped his sword, took it off and placed it on his bed before stripping off the rest of his clothes and heading over to the door to his left. His suspicions about the room behind the door being a bathroom were confirmed when he opened it and walked in, it contained a toilet, small sink and a small shower. Turning on the water Naruto stepped into the shower, just standing in the water as it began to slowly heat up. After luxuriating in the hot water, something he never got in Kanoha thanks to the old crone who owned the apartment he lived in cutting off his heating, and cleaning himself off he went back into his room and put his clothes back on. So how should I begin, asked Naruto as he sat down on his bed. Start by going down to the bar and getting something to eat, Akane suggested. Keep your ears open, people normally tend to talk without realizing that others might be listening in. We'll do this, along with exploring a few miles outside of town each day, and if we have no luck we'll go to another town. Naruto nodded in understanding as he stood up and walked out of the room and down into the bar. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf Back in Kanoha Clone Naruto watched with a grin as several people ran out of an expensive-looking restaurant. This particular establishment was owned by a man called Onikoa Naoto, a wealthy man and one of the few people who rivaled the chain of Akamichi-owned restaurants and barbecues. He also happened to be one of the people who Naruto had found out was particularly spiteful towards him, thanks to some snooping around after being kicked out of this particular restaurant. The night before Naruto had mapped the place out and determined which sewer it was connected to, then he had used a special seal that when activated would create the most horrific stench imaginable. On top of that, he had found a way to create another smell that would attract a large amount of cockroaches and placed both seals on a time delay. All he had to do after that was find a nice place to sit back and watch the fireworks. That'll serve that fat slob not to mess with Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto said with a snicker. Is that so? asked an amused voice from behind. Naruto turned around to see his watcher, Itachi Uchiha. Dressed in his umbu garb standing next to him on the tree branch with his arms crossed. Hey Itakiniasen, the blonde grinned as he rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, to Ajizen then. Itachi shook his head and Naruto could tell from knowing the Uchiha better than most that he was amused, what are we going to do with you? Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf It was several days later that Naruto ended up leaving the small town, having not found any evidence of bandits being in the area. Apparently, the place was simply so insignificant and had nothing of real value that bandits simply never bothered with it. Naruto, who was now dressed as a middle-aged man with graying hair and a beard, spent several more days traveling to the next village, this one being quite a bit bigger than the one he had been in previously. It still wasn't quite as large as Kanoha, but from what Naruto knew of the maps he had studied the only places that were of a similar size was the capital of Hai no Kuni and a gambling town with a large castle called Tenzakugai. When he got to the town Naruto found one of the many inns that littered it and decided to explore the area, that way he could get a feel for the town as well as have some fun exploring a place he had never been to before. The town was actually fairly nice, with an actual cobblestone streets rather than dirt roads and littered with people talking and shopping, the place was definitely more lively than the previous town he had been in. Naruto walked around as he looked at all of the shops, stands and people that milled about. He tried some of the local cuisine, fried calamari on a stick with some kind of spicy dipping sauce. It was pretty good and he enjoyed munching on it before deciding to head back to his inn. He sat down in one of the booths, waiting for the slightly harried-looking waitress to come over to him so he could order some food. Hey, did you hear? There's been another attack. Naruto ears perked up as he heard the whispered conversation behind him, channeling some chakra to his ears he listened in. There's been another one. Was it one of the merchant caravans that came in? Yeah, I heard they got attacked, barely made it out alive. Not only that, but it appears one of the men's eldest daughter was kidnapped. 
That's why you never take your family when you travel or you hire ninja. A can, a can. Naruto said as he ignored the rest of the conversation. Akane, who had been listening in as well, already knew what he was going to ask and said, there are two ways to proceed. The first is to find this caravan and get information out of them, the second is to just ask around town and see what you can find. What's the best option? I would ask around town, Akane said after several moments to think about it. Finding the caravan could prove difficult given the number of inns and shops in this city, and you're likely to find information on them anyways. If you find out where they're staying first you can go to them, but if not I would just gather what information you can about the bandits themselves. Going on that sound advice Naruto began to search for information. He used several transformations, turning into different people so that no one would know who he was or suspect that there was one person looking for a group of bandits. He didn't find out as much as he would like, but he did get a general direction of where all of the raids had taken place. He also found out the little fact that these raids were happening because the town, while large, wasn't large enough to bother stationing a samurai post and because the raids only happened to passing caravans and travelers, no one had sent a mission request to Kanoha. Naruto waited until it was late at night before going out, he was out of his henge and had climbed out of the window, using chakra to stick to wall as he ran onto the roof. Heading south the young blonde shinobi in training jumped across the rooftops and made his way into the forest. Once he got there he knew that the hard part had come, he only had a general direction of where all the attacks had taken place, the south road that led to one of the more populated cities. But he had no clue exactly where the base was located. When he found the road Naruto created a dozen Kage Bunshin and sent them in several directions with orders to dispel as soon as they found the bandit camp. It took half an hour before one of his clones dispelled, and another fifteen minutes before Naruto was able to look through the memory to memorize where the clone had gone. Once his destination was known and mapped out he set off. It didn't take that long to find the camp, he could easily spot it in the dark thanks to the fire they had going. Obviously they had been doing this for so long without repercussion that they felt safe having a fire going at night. That or they were just stupid and had gotten lucky so far. There were currently four people in front of the fire, ugly, dirty and if his enhanced sense of smell was anything to go by, unwashed thugs that were currently laughing and drinking. Naruto couldn't see how many other there were and quickly made another Kage Bunshin and hinged it into a mouse that he sent into the camp. He was going to wait until he had received enough information to launch an attack and take out the base when something happened that made his blood turn cold. A loud voice, gruff and obviously male screamed, before that same voice shouted, you stupid bitch. Then another scream, this time female sounded out, before there was the sound of something hitting the floor or some solid object, and then all went silent. Ah geez, one of the men said as he heard the scream. I hope the boss didn't kill her. Yeah, I would like to have a go at the pretty little thing. Hearing these words and the other bandits stating their agreements Naruto's blood began to boil. How dare these people act so callously. Towards human life. Wanting to teach these men a lesson and make sure the woman he heard was alright, the blonde swooped down from the tree branch to begin his attack. He appeared behind one of the bandits by the fire. His sword was out before conscious thought, there was a flash of light, and Naruto watched as the head of the bandit he had gotten behind rolled along the floor while the body squirted blood out of its neck and dropped. Naruto froze, shock permeated his face that is only seen by the widening of his eyes. What the hell, one of the bandits shouted. He killed Kane. Naruto, still wide-eyed, looked up to see the rest of the bandits by the fire descending on him. It was only thanks to his sparring with Akane that Naruto reacted, dodging a slice from one of the swords, deflecting another one on pure instinct alone. As the last weapon, a hammer, came at him Naruto jumped over the person there and pulled a shuriken out of his pouch. Flicking his wrist like he did when practicing and sending the weapon sailing into the back of the man's head. The other men seemed to freeze at this and Naruto capitulated on that, coming in hard and piercing one of the men through the stomach. Before that man had the chance to topple over, 
the young blonde had pulled his sword out and blocked the slice from the only man left. Naruto could see the look of fear in the man's eyes at seeing how easy the blonde had killed his comrades. In less time than it took the bandit to blink, Naruto had locked their swords together, pulled out a kunai and threw it into the man's throat. Naruto watched as the man clawed at his throat, blood leaking down as a gurgle escaped his lips. He fell to the ground, twitching several times before he laid still. I, I killed them, Naruto thought to himself, his eyes just as wide now as they had been the entire battle. He dropped his sword due to the shock he felt, I killed them all. It was so easy. Akane realized that Naruto was going into shock and quickly tried to bring him out of it, Naruto-kun. You don't have time for this right now, there is one more left. Akane, I killed them. It was like stepping on ants. It was so easy. Damn it. Akane said as she tried to pull Naruto's mind back in. Naruto-kun, none of this is your fault, these people were evil. They, now this is odd, a voice spoke up behind Naruto, causing the blonde to turn his head as he spied a large man with a thick building and a bald head. I had wondered what that noise was, and look at what I found. A little ninja. The man looked at Naruto and snorted, well it's a little soon but I have to thank you for killing them for me. Those men were beginning to get on my nerves, always asking for more, more, more. As a reward, I'll kill you quickly. This guy. He didn't care that his comrades were killed, Naruto thought in shock as the large man raised a very big axes. They didn't even matter to him. What kind of man doesn't care for the people who work with? Him. This man. He's a monster. Naruto watched as the axe descended against him in slow motion, his entire body tensed and he felt a deep welling of some primal power in the pit of his stomach. As if watching from the eyes of another person, Naruto saw his body crouch low to the ground. His hands entered a position that looked like they were gripping something, even though there was nothing there, and he swung his arms. Only his hands were not as empty as they seemed. Blue chakra began to coalesce in his hand, so thick it looked solid, it crackled and sizzled, and as the blonde swing came closer to the man it formed a blade that sliced through the large bandit's abdomen. The large man lurched, blood pouring out of his mouth, and Naruto had to jump away as the top half of the man's body fell away from the bottom, showing he had been split cleanly in two. It only took a minute of staring before Naruto fell down onto his hands and knees, throwing up what was left of his dinner. For several minutes Naruto continued vomiting his food, until there was nothing left, then there was another five minutes of dry heaving as his body tried to purge itself of something that wasn't there. A Akane. I'm here Naruto-kun, Akane's voice chimed softly in his head. She could hear the distress in his voice, and knew that now was not the time for him to wallow in guilt. You need to keep it together right now Naruto, check the tents and make sure there isn't anything of value and see if that girl who we heard is alive or dead. Then you need to destroy the bodies, cremation is the best way and I'll help you with that. I know it's hard Naruto, but you can't let it get to you right now. Arf right, Naruto stood up, though it took several seconds before he could move because his legs were shaking. When he could finally move the young blonde went up to the tent where the large man had come out of, and almost began dry heaving again at the sight that greeted him. There, lying on the table was likely the merchant's daughter. She was dead, that much was obvious from the fact that she was not breathing or moving. She was also completely naked, spread eagle on the table with bruises and slash marks covering her body as well as a growing pool of blood under her head that was beginning to slowly drip of the side of the table. Having learned the birds and bees from Akane he knew enough to know that the girl had just been raped, the cum leaking out of her was a testament to that. Seeing and knowing this was almost enough to make him sick again but he did his best to keep himself from throwing up. Naruto took a tentative step forward, he wanted to look away from this sight but for some reason he found himself unable to do so. The girl, who couldn't be older than sixteen, had light brown hair that looked fairly long and soft green eyes. She was obviously very pretty, and likely the reason the bandits had taken her. Naruto felt tears begin to well in his eyes, no one. 
deserves this, especially not someone so innocent. I agree, in all truth Akane was pissed. There were few things in this world that she detested above all else, people who use others for their own gain, people who refuse to do anything for themselves, arrogance, whiners, and rapists, not particularly in that order. Naruto, make some clones and have them search the tents for anything of value, we also need to take care of the bodies and give this girl a proper burial. Okay, somehow, someway Naruto found the will to do as told. He made five Kage Bunshins, one that began to check this tent for anything of value, two that went over to the other two tents, one that began to pile the bodies of the dead bandits together, and the last one that Naruto made to find a place to dig a grave. Naruto himself walked over to the table and gently placed hand over the girl's face, closing her eyes, he looked around for a moment before laying eyes on the bed sheets. He ripped the sheets and spread them out on the ground, after which he gently lifted up the girl and laid her down on it, he was about to straighten her limbs when he frowned. He didn't want her to be buried like this, with blood leaking from her wounds and the cum of that monster running down her legs. Looking around the blonde found a rag, grabbed it and used a small sway ton, water release, jutsu to make it wet. It didn't take that long to dress her wounds and clean her up, then he straightened her limbs, making her look as dignified as possible before wrapping the sheets around her form. Lifting the girl back up he walked outside and found a spot to set her while he went to work on the other tasks that needed to be done. All of the loot that the bandits had stolen was put in a pile that Naruto sorted through, there was some money, which Naruto put in his wallet since he had no way of knowing who it belonged to, several goods like paintings and metalwork that he sealed into scrolls until he could decide what to do with them. The object that stood out the most was a small necklace, it was locket and when opened the inside it showed a picture of the girl who had just been killed with what could only be her family, a man with dark brown hair, a woman who looked like an older version of the girl, and a little boy was holding the girl's hand. He quickly sucked up his tears and closed the locket, turning it over where he saw the name Carla written on it. He had a feeling that was the name of the girl. Naruto pocketed the necklace and once all of the loot was sealed he had Akane use her Kishunbai, a powerful fox fire that the demoness had created to cremate the remains of the bandits. After that the clones began to dismantle the camp, it was standard ninja procedure to leave no trace of what happened. Meanwhile the other clone that had been digging the grave had dispelled, letting the blonde know it was done. He picked the girl up again and moved over to the grave. It was small, about five feet six. Inches long, one foot wide and two feet deep. Naruto knelt down and gently placed her in the grave, where he then began to cover it up by hand. It took several hours, by the time he was done the sun was beginning to rise and his feelings had been numbed. Narutakun, Akane said in a soft voice, grabbing the young boy's attention. When you go back to your room come into the seal. K. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf As soon as Naruto re-entered his room he sat on the bed and entered the seal. When he opened his eyes Akane was already standing before him, she didn't say anything, just opened her arms. Arms which Naruto ran into as he began to sob, Nothing was said between the two as the immortal demoness held on to her container. She sat down, taking Naruto with her as she held his head to her chest. She didn't care about how much time they spent like that, or that he was beginning to soak her kimono with his tears, all that mattered was Naruto needed her. Is it wrong that I'm pleased those men are gone, asked Naruto, his voice a haggard whisper as his tears finally dried up. No, it's not. Akane said in a comforting voice. Those men were horrible, some of the vilest kind of people alive. They killed other people, innocent people for their own gain, raped and killed an innocent young girl, and I can assure you that this is not the first time they had done so. It's only right to be glad men like that are no longer in this world. I feel like a monster, Naruto whispered, like I committed some horrible sin, I was looking at my hands when I came in the room and it was like I could see the blood on them. You're not a monster, Akane assured him, running her hand through his hair in an attempt to soothe his soul. You're a young man who just killed several corrupt, evil men who needed to be brought to justice. Had you not killed them, those men would have continued to strike at passing travelers, they would have found, raped and killed more young women. 
Because of you, they can no longer do that, and those women, who may have been killed and raped because of them are safe. The young boy, who, through experience and trial by fire could no longer truly be considered a child, paused, and looked up at the woman who was currently holding him. It hurts, knowing I've taken a life, even ones like those bandits. And yet at the same time, I'm glad they're dead. Does that make sense? Of course it does, the fact that it hurts shows that you have a good heart, that you can feel pain by killing, even when the people you kill are evil says that you're a good person. She brought Naruto's head back and rested her own head on top of his, it's only when you no longer feel that pain that you become a monster. When you feel nothing for those you kill that you will be better off putting up your sword. So I'm not a monster, asked Naruto in a hopeful voice. No, you're not, Akane lifted his head up very slightly and planted a linger kiss on. His forehead. Naruto looked at her for several seconds before resting his head against her again, can I stay with you tonight? Akane smiled as she said, you can always stay with me, if that's what you want. For the first time since Naruto had killed those bandits in the clearing a small smile came to his face as he felt asleep, still being held in the arms of the woman who he knew would always be there for him. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf The next morning Naruto woke up, feeling better, he was a little numb and the pain of killing and the girl's death still hurt. But thanks to Akane he didn't feel as bad as before. As he looked around the room his eyes caught a glint of light near his side. Looking down he saw the blade that had formed in his hand last night lying next to him. He frowned as he picked up the sword and examined it. The sword was a dado, a Japanese long sword that had a 27-inch blade. The middle ridge of the blade, or the shinogi, was near the center of the blade and had a narrow profile, otherwise known as shinobihikushi, the point was done in the kisaki style, with a curved profile, and smooth three-dimensional curvature across the surface towards the edge, the blade was a dark black that seemed to suck in all light, while the edge was pure silver. At the bottom of the blade, near the tsuba was a depiction of a golden wolf howling. The crossguard had four prongs bent out to form the shape of the manji, kanji for full. The grip was covered in black crisscrossing lace with gold flecks. Finishing the sword off was a short length of chain with a broken link at the end that dangled from the base of the hilt. The entire blade was unlike anything he had ever seen, and he couldn't help but wonder where he got it. We'll figure that out when we get home, Akane said, interrupting his musings. Maybe there will be some knowledge of this in the Kenjutsu section of your library. For now though, we should see if that caravan is still here so you can return that locket you found and let the girl's family know that her death has been avenged. Right. Naruto got up and managed to take a quick shower before going downstairs for breakfast, or lunch, since it was midday by now. He spent the next hour or so doing what he had done the last time that he had looked for information, when he had been trying to find the bandit camp. It didn't take that long for Naruto to find out that the caravan that had been attacked two days before he had gotten there, was currently staying at a hotel called Taya Truit, Tired Trout, and were selling the wares they had managed to escape with at a shop called Jurai Kair, Traditional Pawn. Figuring he would have the best chance of finding them would be at the store Naruto, in his middle-aged man Henge, entered the small shop. He didn't pay much attention to the interior, beyond noticing the knick-knacks that were on the shelves in no real form of order or fashion, letting him know the place was a pawn shop. There was only one person there, and it wasn't any of the people he was looking for. It was an old man with shock white hair done in a top-knot haircut, he had squinted eyes and a long beard and mustache. Seeing as he was the only one around Naruto walked up to him, excuse me. Hmm yes. Can I help you find something young man, asked the aging man. Not exactly, but you can help me find someone, Naruto said as he gave the old man a description of the people he had seen in the locket. I had heard that they were selling their wares here, the blonde finished as the old man stroked his beard in thought. Hmm. I think I remember seeing them yesterday, the old man said slowly, yes, that's right. They came yesterday and sold me some of the items they have, I don't know where they are now though. Damn, Naruto thought, hopefully they're still at their hotel. Thank you for your help, 
Naruto said with a bow. If the old man replied the blonde didn't hear it since Naruto was out of the door less than a second later. He made his way down the street and walked inside the Teya Truit, stepping up to the front desk where a pretty woman in her early twenties was standing. Excuse me, I'm looking for a man in his mid-forties with dark brown hair and grey eyes, he would be with a woman with brown hair and brown eyes and a little boy. The woman manning the desk looked at him for a second before tapping her chin in thought, you know, I think I remember those people you're talking about. I'm pretty sure they left some time this morning, she opened a small book on the desk and flipped through it, yep, they checked out this morning. Naruto resisted the urge to swear, even while he bowed and thanked the woman for her time. What are you going to do now, asked Akane as the blonde left the hotel. There's nothing I can do, Naruto said with a frown. If they left this morning then that means they have a four to six hour head start on me, even if I use Kage Bunshin I don't know if I'll find them. He reached into his pocket and pulled out the locket, looking at it for a minute before sighing. I'll hold on to this and give it to them if I ever manage to find them during my travels or after I become a shinobi. That's probably a good idea, you need to get back to Kanoha anyways. Which is why we're heading back now, which way is Kanoha? Southeast. Right, off we go then. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf Another month had passed and summer was only days from ending. During that time Naruto's determination grew and with the help of Akane, he doubled the amount of Kage Bunshin he could summon for his training. His training was going well, Naruto had around 50 clones all working on Fuinjutsu. He had one of them read for half an hour and then dispel, giving the other clones the knowledge on the next step or whatever seal the clone was reading about so they could work. Another clone would take the place of the previous. Clone and the process would soon repeat himself. He was still only in the basic stages of learning Fuinjutsu, but Akane told him that he was very much a prodigy and would likely be better than the most prominent seal master in a few years' time. His elemental training, while not progressing like his Fuinjutsu skills, was still going strong. Because Naruto was keeping his training a secret, he was unable to do the next step in wind manipulation, cutting a waterfall in half with his chakra. However, he had decided to learn the first step for his fire manipulation training, blowing out a stream of fire through his mouth. So far he could only blow out puffs of fire but he was sure that he would complete it within the next week. He had around 100 clones working on this. Taijutsu was going the same as usual, because he had to learn Taijutsu on his own for the most part, he wasn't learning it as fast as his other practices. Akane helped when she could, but there was only so much they could do in his mindscape. They had found a small way around that, partially at least. By having Naruto spar against a Yuki-enhanced Kage Bunshin, and having more clones surrounding them when they fought. Afterwards, all the clones would dispel and Naruto and Akane could review the spar through the memories of his clones, allowing them to pick out his flaws and correct them. Another form of training Naruto had added to his sparing regime was Kenjutsu. The blonde had had his clones search his mom and dad's library for any information they could find on a good Kenjutsu style and the Uzumaki clan in general. Their search had turned up two things, a scroll of a Kenjutsu style known as Issei no Ryuken, Dragon's Cry Sword style. It was a style that had been made specifically by the Uzumaki clan, which at one point had been one of the most feared clans within the elemental nations. It was the reason the clan had been destroyed, the Uzumaki clan had been so feared for their prowess with a blade that Kirigakure, village hidden in the mist, Kumogakure, village hidden in the clouds, and Iwakakure, village hidden in the rocks, had made a combined effort to wipe them out during the Third Great War. The three great nations had attacked the Uzumaki village, Yuzushiogakure no Sato, the village hidden in the whirlpools, and wiped them out. Even then, it had taken two months for the Uzumaki clan to be defeated, and the combined forces of the three great nations, which had outnumbered the small clan ten to one, had been reduced by half. The Issei no Ryuken sword style was one that was created specifically with the Uzumaki clan in mind. It was a style that was said to bring out the essence of the dragon, a legendary creature that was said to be one of the most powerful mythical beasts in existence, during combat. 
The style was a combination of speed and ferocious power and the scroll stated that one who had mastered this style was able to cut through boulders and the strongest steel with relative ease. The style had been created by the Uzumaki clan in order to work with their bloodline. The bloodline was called Haidokage no Yaiba, Soul Blade, and was technically considered a chakra-based bloodline. This was because the sword that every Uzumaki used was one specifically made from their chakra. Each sword of an Uzumaki clan member was unique, and vastly different from any other. Naruto had found some of his mother's notes, and knew that her blade had been a traditional ninjato but could be absorbed into her body, where she would then shoot chakra chains from her back. No two Uzumaki blades were alike, and each blade held their own special abilities, their own powers, making the Uzumaki clan's bloodline one of the most coveted bloodlines in the world. That was why the style the Uzumaki clan had created had no sword dances, it relied on basic movement and stances, the true power came from the physical prowess required to use the style. Uzumaki clan members trained their bodies extensively to move at speeds no normal human, even a John level ninja, was capable of accomplishing, something their bodies were uniquely suited for to complement their bloodline. Through many hours of meditation Naruto had discovered that his blade was called Haikijukami, wolf of light and shadows, and was a blade of contradictions. The black that his blade was made of represented the hardships, the darkness, that was in his life. Yet the edge of the blade was a bright silver, and seemed to glow with light, representing his will to not give in to the darkness. The secret techniques that the blade held, all of which were known as Uzumaki Hijitsu Kenjutsu, Uzumaki secret sword techniques, were Haitan, light release, and Yamaden, dark release, and allowed him to wield light and darkness based chakra techniques, something that Akane had told him was unheard of as those two techniques were supposed to belong to the gods Kami and Yami respectively. Right now Naruto could not use any of the techniques for his sword, even with the knowledge of how to use them his body was unable to handle the strain of doing so. It would likely take several years of training before he could use any of Haikajukami's techniques. Keep going Naruto-kun, you only have one more hour of this and then you can take a break, Akane said as Naruto continued his kenjutsu training, while standing upside down on the ceiling. Currently, Naruto was practicing with a bakken, a wooden sword that was roughly the same length as his sword. Along the length of the wooden blade was a long string of seals that increased the blade's weight so that he could train the speed at which he swung his sword. His shirt was off, having long since been discarded, showing off not only the muscles he had gained from three years of intense physical training, muscles that no child his age should have, but also the many seals that adorned his body. Along his arms, back, chest, stomach and legs were what looked like black chains. This was a seal that he had found in his father's personal notes on sealing called Taiku Fuyin, resistance seals. The seals were designed to increase the resistance of body movement by constantly constricting all of the muscles found in the human body and forcing them to contract against each other. This forced the person using the seals to constantly strain against their own muscles in order to move, increasing both the strength and speed of the user's movement. The amount of resistance from the seal was relative to the amount of chakra used, though the seal only had 100 levels. It was an extremely dangerous seal to use, Minato's notes had said that it should only be used one hour a day. Thankfully, Naruto had Akane and thus, the debilitating effects of using the seal were negated, allowing him to use it as long as he wanted. Currently Naruto was at level 10, when he had first started using the seal it had been relatively easy, the first few levels felt a little like he was underwater. At first the blonde had wanted to just increase the seal to a level that was actually difficult to move in, but Akane had told him not to, saying that it was better to have completely mastered each level, that way his tie and kenjutsu form wouldn't become sloppy. After all, there was no use training to be faster and stronger, if you lost all sense of coordination while in combat. The way Akane had him use the seal was that he would work on perfecting each kata for his tie and kenjutsu forms while the seal was active, performing them at the same speed he could without the seals while maintaining perfect form. Then he would rework his form without the seals to make sure he could fight without the seals restricting his movements perfectly. Only after that would he move to the next level. 
It was highly effective and thanks to Akane it was made doubly so, allowing him to train twice as much in half the time. Despite feeling the strain of every single one of his muscles contracting against each other, and the sweat that was soaking his body, Naruto kept his breathing perfectly even and controlled as he moved through his katas. He didn't even acknowledge Akane's words as he focused completely on his movements, ingraining them into his very being. Okay, that's enough for today Naruto-kun, Akane said, go back to your apartment and get cleaned up. Then come into the seal, I have something I want to teach you. Naruto moved out of his stance and into an upright position. He held a hand over a small circle in the center of his solar plexus where all of the chains of his seal met. Channeling his chakra into the seal, the ring glowed a bright blue for a moment before fading, likewise the chains faded and disappeared, making it impossible to know they were even there. All right, he said as he stopped channeling chakra to his feet and dropped to the floor below, flipping halfway and cushioning his fall with chakra. Right next. To him a Kage Bunshin phased into existence and dispelled itself the next second, letting the clones that were in the dojo practicing elemental manipulation and jutsu, and the other clones that were in the library reading know that it was time to dispel. Meanwhile, Naruto closed his eyes and concentrated, light blue chakra surrounded him before his form rippled and in his place stood a shorter, orange-clad version of himself. Time to head home, he said as he moved towards the door. Story of the Ten-Tailed Wolf After getting washed Naruto found himself in the seal. Akane was already waiting for him, a small, fanged smirk adorning her face. What's up, Akanakan, he said, sitting down next to her. Akane's smirk grew bigger, I've been thinking about our situation, and how going to school will hamper the amount of time you have to train. Therefore, I am going to teach you a powerful clone technique that is only known to myself. Naruto raised both eyebrows, then an excited grin made its way onto his face. Have I ever told you I love you, he asked. Despite herself Akane blushed, she knew the words were said jokingly but she couldn't help but think that maybe he really did feel something for her. After all, they had gotten very close in the past few years, especially recently with everything that happened to the blonde. Damn it. Stop thinking about this. She scolded herself, even if something happens he's too young right now. I need to be patient. Taking a deep breath to calm her raging mind and admittedly perverted thoughts of her and an older Naruto, Akane gave him her own teasing grin. I would hope you love me after all we've been through together and all of the situations we've been in, she said, emphasizing the word situation. Now it was Naruto's turn to blush as he thought of how the vixen before him would tease him with her body. It was tough because even though his mind was far older than his physical body, he still hadn't hit puberty yet and didn't get the typical teenage response, despite his mind giving him erotic images. SSO, what was it you wanted to teach me, he coughed, trying to get back on track. Akane grinned at her victory, it is a very powerful clone technique, as I said. With this. Jutsu, for lack of a better word, you will be able to make a clone that will not only contain one third of your chakra, but will not dispel in a single, or even multiple hits. It will have all of your abilities and act just like you, in fact, the only difference between this clone and you is that it cannot regain lost chakra and will dispel when its chakra is gone. So you're saying you can give me a clone jutsu that not only acts like me but can also take a massive beating, asked Naruto, getting a nod. Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? Because the requirement to use this, aside from a massive amount of chakra, is two gallons worth of blood, Akane said with a shrug. Ooh, Naruto said, looking a little pale. He shook his head and gained a determined look, so what is this clone jutsu? Akane gave him a fanged grin, I call it, Chishio Bunshin, blood clone. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, share and subscribe. This is Raven Sage signing off.